Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello, and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. My name is Stephanie Mock, and I will be your host today, filling in for Pumai. We have a very exciting show, what I think is an exciting show, called The Numbers Behind the Food, Agricultural Statistics in Hawaii, with a very special guest who I know very well, Kathy King. So most people don't think about statistics day to day, but for Kathy King, it's her job and her passion. And even though it's probably gonna pain her to hear this, I have never taken a statistics class in my life. So I think it's a great opportunity for her to showcase to me, but to our audience as well, about why agricultural statistics in specific is so important to Hawaii's food and farmers and our local food supply. So I invited Kathy King to kind of explain the story behind the numbers and show the numbers behind the food. You know, these statistics do everything from market prices to helping our farmers know more about the economy and how they can make smart choices for Hawaii and their businesses. So I'd like to extend a warm welcome to Kathy King. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Is this your first time on Think Tech Hawaii? It is. And well, welcome. I know you are awed by the fabulous studio we have here, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's very beautiful. It is. Yes, I know we have this beautiful. beautiful landscape behind us. Yes, it's yes. It's so nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, in your introduction, I apologize, I didn't actually say what your role was. So you are the state statistician for Hawaii with the USDA National Agricultural Statistics Service. Say that three times fast. Also known as USDA NAS. Correct. So we'll call it NAS Correct. today, right? Yeah, NAS is much easier. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, NAS. We'll call yeah. that NAS. So, you know, NAS, obviously, National Agricultural Statistics Service. But w what is that? Agricultural statistics um, are, we collect data from farmers themselves. Mm about acreage, about uh, production in pounds or tons, and prices. That data is then um, given out to the public for free. It's used by, uh, it's used by uh, companies, it's used by legislators, it's used by local authorities. Um, it helps to uh, give a good picture of Hawaiian agriculture. Oh, nice. So, you know, um, you're with USDA NAS. Have you, how long have you been working with them? I've been with USDA NAS for 16 years. 16 years? 16 years, So yes. prior to that, were you also doing agricultural statistics or were you in a completely different I field? I was completely different. Oh, okay. I actually spent 20 years working in clerical jobs. Oh, okay. And then um, I decided I wanted to go back to college and I went back to college and I uh, chose graduated. one of the hardest majors, probably. <laughs> actually, statistics. I did, actually, <laughs> actually, I did not major in okay. statistics. I majored in, and this is fun, going to be funny, I majored in equine science. What? Which, of course, is a horses. Yes. Uh, it's what I culture. Yes. Yeah. What I wanted to do when I first graduated high school, and my parents said, "No, you can't do that. You'll never get a job." Yeah. Uh, You're but playing uh, with horses. What do you oh, do? Oh yeah. Oh. It, it was great. It was great. Yeah. 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 So um, you know, you talked about you have this background in horses and equine, um, equestrian, and stuff. So where are you from originally? I was born and raised in Missouri. Okay. Um, when I was eight years old, we moved from St. Louis, the city, mm -hmm. to the country. And we had, uh, my grandfather had a farm and my, my dad had a farm. Neither one of them were real production farms. We didn't really sell anything off the land. Okay. Uh, but we had horses and cattle and we had hogs and goats and uh, ducks and geese and all kinds of things. <laughs> and I just absolutely love growing up in the country. It gives you so much freedom, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but so that's, that's where I was really... Uh, develop my interest in agriculture and as a consequence I I, um, I want to support farmers in any way I can mm -hmm. and uh, this job helps me do that so um, you you have this history with agriculture right 
And I know you studied equine science. Equine science. Yeah. Did you ever think of becoming a rancher or a farmer? Or were you like, oh. no, just horses? <laughs> uh, oh, oh no! I, I've I've always actually I've always wanted to have a cattle ranch with some horses, and uh, unfortunately, it takes money. This is, yeah, this is this is very true. Um, I don't think a lot of people know that people have the dream of the farm, right? Yes, Not yes. knowing the capital that's request or, yes, you know, required yes, for the yes, initial yes. investment. So, yeah. So you were talking a little bit about some of those examples of agricultural statistics. So mm -hmm. you know, acreage that's in production, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. pounds produced, and top commodities. I think we have a chart here that shows top commodities in Hawaii, and okay. I, I'd like you to you know. Kind of take us maybe through the first couple. So, sure. What are we looking at? So, um, as you can tell, these are our top twenty commodities by the value of production. Okay. So it's not acreage. It's not you know anything it's else. Just it's money. just the value. Okay. Um, as you can see, seed crops kind of ranks number one, but that's not really well. We um, we value the seed crops by. The budget that they spend here in Hawaii, okay. because they don't actually sell their commodity. Okay. Um, however, as you can see, coffee was worth 48 million, nice. or for almost 49 million. Sugarcane, uh, now gone. Remember, this is 2016. Yeah. I know. I'm like, uh, I've been yeah. surprised by that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, now and zero. then cattle are the is, is the next big one. Mac nuts. Aquaculture has become very big mm -hmm. uh, because of the algae producers. Oh, okay. um, it's it's a really large market, um, and then you know our floor culture and some of our fruits and vegetables. Yeah, it's Going interesting to me how you know rank two through seven are all pretty similar yes. value of production. Um, I didn't think it would be as an equitable dis distribution that is it, as it is. So, and you know people think Hawaii papayas. But for me, <laughs> seeing it number nine, that's. You know, yes. people think coffee and sugar, right? But papayas are definitely in the mindset of yes. what Hawaii definitely. is known for definitely. agriculturally, yes. and yet, and while yet it's, they it's are still a nine. huge part yeah. of the agricultural supply here in terms of value of production, they're ninth in the state. So, yes, yeah, that's and, and we have a, it, you know, and it surprises people. I was talking to, um, I was talking to a farmer at, at a workshop one day, and he was telling me that he doesn't like to. Um, doesn't like to respond to our surveys, okay? Because he said, uh, so if you go out and you look, you know, our top uh, export is airplane parts, and you know, and it was like, what? okay. I said, but do you realize that vegetables just by themselves are worth forty-eight million? Yeah, in the state. Oh, oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, and so it it, it surprises people. Uh, when you, when they find out actually how much money is involved in agriculture, mm -hmm. um, and so it's um, I enjoy the, I enjoy being able to bring things up like that and, and make people know yes we have an agriculture commodity here. You would be great for like pub trivia with just like an <laughs> agricultural theme yeah. of like Only did you know Only vegetables yeah. are forty eight million <laughs> forty eight million dollars. Um, yeah, that's wonderful. Um, so that was some that was um, some information that NAS collected for 2016, and they yes. provided that report. And then there it, there does seem to be a relationship with the Aloha Plus Challenge. So you were talking a lot about you know companies and other government entities and stuff like that use the information that you have provided publicly. Mm -hmm. The reports. Mm -hmm. I, we'll talk a little bit more about farmer privacy later. But they'll use that information, those public national reports, yes. to kind of show market trends or to, you know, inform the public basically. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have another graph here that is provided by Aloha Plus uh -huh. that used the NAS survey results. It mm -hmm. shows the pounds produced yes. um, in 2016. So I thought maybe you, you know. I do love graphs, but when I think I'm just so out of school now that I'm like, someone explain this graph to me. So I have just the expert here. Um, Kathy, if you could please tell me and explain and give me the story, the numbers behind the food of what's going on here. So the, the thing that sticks out to me on this graph is the milk um, bar. Right. So that's the tallest one there. Who knew that <laughs> Who we knew? produced 35 million pounds of milk here? That. Seems unusual. I 
It's so crazy. I, yeah. <laughs> I work in agriculture, right? I work for an agriculture nonprofit, Oahu RC and D. We work with farmers all the time, and I would not say the trend is dairy. No. Nope. Um, yeah. Just to think in production, you know, you, for me, I think diversified row crops or papayas. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So milk, obviously, the most amount pounds of locally in pounds. Food. Yes. And, yeah. Yep. And then next, our favorite papayas. 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 Yes. We produce a lot of papayas. Twenty. That's million twenty million pounds. pounds in 2016. Right. Um, the reason they're so far down on the the value chart is they don't get a whole lot per pound. Okay. Um, because a lot of the papayas are used for uh, processing as opposed to fresh market eating. Okay. Which gives you a lower price. But, um, and then the, the third one, the very one at the end, is red meat production, which, okay. of course, goes back to the cattle. Right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of funny looking at the, at the table of commodities and then the, this, this uh, graph, mm -hmm. and it looks like, you know, it kind of looks almost backwards. It, but, uh, it does. Yes. You're right. And yeah. avocados are so low. And, yes. You know, and I know there's been a huge push locally to increase production of kalo or taro. Um, and so right now it's about 3 million pounds, actually. And I think as the years go on and more low-E open up, I think that production will increase. But I hope so. like I said, the numbers behind the food, like people do not think milk would be the highest <laughs> amount of pounds produced um, in 2016. And so, yeah, thank you so much for, you know, collecting that data. It's, so, it, yeah. I'm, I'm a numbers nerd, so yeah. I, I love numbers. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. You're a numbers nerd, but you also can speak <laughs> about the numbers, which is oh, okay. which is why I think you're so important in the agricultural scene. You know, a lot of farms maybe, you know, we talk about this a lot on our show. Farmers are businessmen, businesswomen. Yes. They are environmental stewards. They're trying to determine markets. They're trying to come up with recipes that use their, <laughs> um, their goods and stuff like that. And sometimes... They can get blinders on, and I know what this farm is doing, but you're able to kind of work with farmers and collect that necessary data to take that broader perspective, you know. So, okay, yes, papayas are so many pounds this year, but maybe a disease is coming in and it's going to knock out. What is that value going to be to Hawaii's economy, and how is that going to affect local jobs and, you know, the tourism sector? The mm -hmm. tourism sector especially has been a huge push to provide more local food, right? Yes, so, yes. So, you know, if all the, if one crop gets completely wiped out, how is that going to affect the restaurants that rely on those farms? So, um, yeah, so, you know, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're going to take a quick break soon. Um, we're just gonna be talking more about your role in how you collect this information. Okay. And then we're gonna talk about the big thing, the 2017 census, census of, of agriculture. Census of yes, agriculture. Census of agriculture. Right, yes. exactly. So <laughs> everyone's probably terrified now watching, but that's okay. Um, the census of agriculture, you're going to talk more about why it's so important, what it is, and how can the audience help support you in collecting this data that not only helps farmers, but our local businesses and Hawaii's economy in general. That's correct. Yes. 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 It's very important. It's very important. So yeah. thank you for spending time today. And well, thanks to for having me here. Yeah. I appreciate it. We have been joined with Kathy King, the state statistician from the USDA NAS. The first half of our show talked about her background in agriculture, growing up in Missouri and being surrounded by horses. Her, her love, <laughs> um, her new love and her job as well is statistics, though. But definitely collecting agricultural statistics to help Hawaii learn more and get a broader perspective of what Hawaii's agricultural scene is like and what it's going to look like in the years to come. We'll be right back. He's a service dog. Well, I could get a vest too. You're not even a service dog. He's trained to assist his owner. Well, I can do whatever he can do. 
Wow, did he just open the door? Yep. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that either. He's trained for over two years to become a service dog. Man, I wish I could be a service dog. Welcome back, everyone. The first half of our show featured Kathy King, and we're going to be featuring her for the second half. You get one guest for the whole show. It's going to be a great show. She was talking to us about agricultural statistics in Hawaii, the numbers behind the food, right? She's giving us an idea of what she does day to day, crunching numbers so we can get that bigger story about Hawaii's food supply and our agricultural system. So the first half of our show, we talked about what are agricultural statistics, very basic information, why it's important, but now we're going to be talking about a huge project that USDA NAS is focusing on that only happens every five years, and it's really important for farmers not only in Hawaii but nationally. It's called the 2017 Census of Agriculture, and Kathy King, our state statistician, excuse me, is going to explain just what that is and how you, the audience, can help her collect this really important data for us all. All right, Kathy, we are going to jump into it. I forgot during the break to bring up our nice display yes our, and i'm sure i'm going to put it in focus. the wrong spot and they're going to get mad at me but that's okay all right whatever there we go all right so the 2017 census of agriculture what is it it is um actually the census of agriculture has been going on since um let's see 1890 oh my something goodness something like that it's been going on for a long time we do uh, the census every five years, as okay. you said. Um, it, the reason why it's so important, especially now, is because it's for the way NASA is set up now. Mm -hmm. This is our only source of county numbers. So for those people who are doing grants, um, this is going to be the only source of county value of agriculture, how many acres in a certain crop, um, it's whether the demographics in that county, mm -hmm. and, and of course demographics are used not just in agriculture, but all through the society. Um, it's, like I said, we collect it once every five years. It's a big survey. It it's 24 like it. <laughs> pages. Um, and so it's, um, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. I, I've talked to some farmers who are like, I can't do it, I, you know, it's just too much, it's too much. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanna say for the farmers that if you have problems, I am here in Honolulu, you can call me anytime. But, um, so the... Is it, a, is it a snapshot in time or is it to show what they've been doing all of 2017 or what they've been doing the last five years? Um, it's actually what they've been doing for 2017. Okay. It collects one year's worth of data. So um, some, of, some of the estimates or some of the uh, data points are going to be a shot in time mm -hmm. because we ask for inventory of cattle as of December 31. We ask for inventory of poultry as of December 31, okay. pigs. Uh, but otherwise, it's going to be, you know, um, how much did you produce mm -hmm. um, and how much money did you make from what you produced? Mm -hmm. um, it's... The value of production is really important for the state. And the reason is um, we're a small state, as you all know. Um, our agriculture is, I think, you know, I said earlier that it's more valuable than what you think, but we're still small. Mm -hmm. um, the census of agriculture data goes into determining how much money we get from the federal government mm -hmm. for grants, uh, for research, um, the uh, funding for CTAR, funding for some of the NGOs. Um, and if um, I, one of one of my goals when I got here four years ago was to make sure that people knew Hawaii has agriculture and it's worth something. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's my goal. And so the Census of Agriculture helps me to bring that because it's a survey for every farmer in the state. Mm -hmm. 
And I have some people saying, well, I'm not really a farmer. You know, I don't sell anything, I'm not really a farmer. But according to NAS and according to the USDA and according to Congress, you are a farmer if you have $1,000 worth of sales during the year, okay, or if you have the potential to have sales of the thousand dollars during the year. So it's not a very big criteria. Yeah, it's not very strict. It's not very strict. Um, and so I, you know, and so that's what I do is I, I, I talk to people. It's like, no, that's it's okay. You know, yes, you are a farmer. Please fill out the census. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's. Um, you know, you're talking about that kind of funding that's available for Hawaii, um, both state and federally, and these statistics are that mathematical language that <laughs> that the mainland understands. Yes. You yes. know, on our show a lot, we talk about all the kind of like microclimates of agriculture yes. that we have here, and it it is a great story and it's very colorful, but people in DC may not understand that, especially if you've never been to Hawaii. Correct. So I think Correct. speaking the language of numbers and kind of showing those numbers is a way to reach an audience mm -hmm. that maybe wasn't aware of um, Hawaii's impact, but also the diversified agriculture that yes. we have here. Yes. So, you know, you know, you work with farmers, I know, but I thought we could just play a quick PSA by USDA that, that has Definitely. farmers explaining why it's so important to participate in the census. I love that idea. All right. <laughs> it really helps business better invest in agriculture. It's important because it's it's the official, if you will, or federal government's numbers keeping of uh, growers across the country. If farmers do not respond to NAS requests for data, then we're going to be flying by the seat of pans. If you're not counted, then you're not considered. If you don't participate, then we don't know you're there. If we do not get counted accurately, the decision makers, the policy makers, Congress isn't going to have the right information to put together the programs that best serve our farm industry. One of the reasons is, is because we need to make sure that we find the producers who are out in those areas who, again, who otherwise we met, who would go unnoticed or un underserved. It helps you better understand the number of producers out there in Indian country and in all minority groups. It's really hard for us to advocate for young farmers if we don't have the data. If the general public and if the legislators and if the politicians don't know you're there, they can't target programs to you. The more uh, knowledge there is of their presence, the more groups such as mine will be able to work with them. It can impact uh, you know, consumers' perceptions of who's involved, and we need to be able to tell our story and tell it accurately. It's important for minority farmers, people of color, to participate in the Ag Census because it's a reflective of, of what is really out there in the community. Having the good data uh, starts with the farmers filling out the, uh, the information in the first place. We have to know what's going on on our farms and ranches today. And, you know, we are private people, but unless we share some things, we'll never get better. So we just saw that PSA from USDA of farmers talking about why it's so important to participate in the 2017 Census of Agriculture. And, you know, we heard from these strong farmer voices, but we also have another strong farmer voice, or excuse me, statistician voice with <laughs> Kathy King, who um, kind of is introducing us to this agricultural census. Because I've never, obviously I'm not a farmer, mm -hmm. but um, I wasn't even working in agriculture in 2012. So it's, for me, this is my first time kind of you know, navigating the landscape of, no farmers, please do this, it's so important. Um, and, you know, they're talking about why it's so important for funding. And I think, especially in terms of California, like you said, Hawaii is very small. So when people think numbers, they're not thinking Hawaii. But, you know, the more data that we collect, the bigger picture we can show and the bigger impact that Hawaii can have in terms of not only 
helping find funding for its farmers, but also just kind of being a stronger agricultural voice. That's you know? right. Right. That's right. Um, so, you know, we keep talking about the census, right? But how can I do the census? You, you know, say I am a farmer, I made $2,000, so I qualify <laughs> yeah. in 2017 for the census. How do, how do I fill the census out? Where is it? Well, hopefully we have you on our list. Okay. Um, and that it, sounds scary. Yeah. Maybe maybe expand on that <laughs> <Okay>. a little bit. <laughs> so we do um, uh, we do web scraping mm -hmm. to look for farmers. We look at other public records okay. to look for farmers. And if we find a farmer uh, or what we somebody that we think is a farmer, mm -hmm. we will send out a like kind of like an exploratory survey. Just a really quick, really general question. Are you a farmer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, how many acres do you have? Okay. What do you grow? Um, when we receive that back, we will make you a active farmer oh, on our list. Okay. Uh, and if you are an active farmer on our list, you will receive a census when it's time to send them out. If you are a new farmer and you didn't get a census, and you were operating in 2017, you can actually call us and we'll send you a census of okay. agriculture. So, so you're sending a paper copy, right? Paper copy. Is Everything. there a way people yeah. can do it online, perhaps? Yes, as a matter of fact, we have uh, developed a, a, a new online system for doing the census and it's... 21st century. Huh? Yes. <laughs> you went from 1890 yeah. census yeah. to yeah. online and an yes. online yes. census yes. now. Um, um, and I think we have a short video that kind of explains yes, that I think platform. We do. Yeah. So let's play that now. If Respond to the 2017 Census of Agriculture online. It's more convenient than ever. Start by going to www.agcounts.usda.gov. Type in your unique 17-digit survey code located on the front page of your census questionnaire. Now accessible on mobile phone, tablet, and computer, the improved online questionnaire saves time, is secure, and improves data quality. Respond online today. So that's a live time version, right? It takes yes. 10, 20 seconds to finish the entire census, right? Uh, um, not <laughs> I'm quite. I'm totally teasing Not you. quite. <laughs> <laughs> it is a long survey. It's yeah. 24 pages long. It goes into your expenses and everything that you raised and everything that you sold. Um, but it is really important. Okay. Um, without that data and without complete data, um, we can't be assured that we're reporting the right numbers mm -hmm. because our numbers, the, the accuracy of our numbers depends on farmers reporting them. Right. Um, and so we really encourage <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the farmers to um, get that census out if they've still got it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. You know, obviously we've talked about why agricultural statistics are important, what yes. they are, and especially why they're important here in Hawaii. Yes. You know, we are not the mainland, right? We mm -hmm. are a small island, a small acreage compared to the mainland. But, you know, coming here and explaining, you know, the story or the numbers behind the food, um, thank you so much. Well, thank you thank for you. having me. I, yeah. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So you heard, if you're a farmer and you're not <laughs> filling out the census, you're going to be on Kathy King's naughty list, all right? <laughs> it's very important. It's a personal plea of mine. Please fill out this census, the 2017 Census of Agriculture. It really helps Hawaii in terms of funding for farmers, whether that's for equipment, for new land, et cetera, a bunch of things. So the more data that we show, um, and don't worry, all your information is private. They are, um, what is it, FOIA? We are exempt FOIA, from, ex from FOIA Exempt requests. from FOIA. So please check out 2017 Census of Agriculture. If you have questions, call Kathy King at USDA NAS. We'll join you next time on Hawaii Food and Farmers. Thanks.